Congratulations. You have made it to the third topic of cost volume profit analysis, which is the applications of CVP. Now I say this is our last video, except I don't want to be misleading to you. Yes, it is our last video for this chapter, but cost volume profit analysis, I have given you the building blocks of it. The application um, can really be monumental and numerous. So I say monumental, uh, not, not to scare you, but if anything, to empower you. Because once you understand and master the building blocks and you understand how these things work, then you don't have to memorize anything. In fact, working smarter, not harder, means if you synthesize and understand, you don't have to memorize. And if you're anything like me, the moment I memorize something and I use it, then I lose it. Whereas this time, it's in there, it's done, you can really eliminate or at least greatly reduce the amount that you need to relearn before an assignment or test day. Okay, CVP in action. This CVP analysis has a number of uses during financial decision-making processes. It can be leveraged to decide whether or not uh, to produce a product line expansion, advertising campaign, change a selling price. You may want to find out the number of units or sales dollars required to break even. Find the number of units or sales dollars required to achieve a particular target operating, uh, as well as a margin of safety. You may want to determine operating leverage. So look at a sensitivity of profits uh, in regards to the changes in sales. I have used CVP analysis when managing a multi-million dollar project uh, that upon the surface uh, wasn't manufacturing. So somebody might say, why CVP analysis? It's because this is a tool. And just like anything, how somebody chooses to use a tool, that's where the skill and that's where the empowerment comes from. An example, a company is trying to decide whether or not to proceed with a television ad campaign that will cost $3,000. Without the ad campaign, the company expects to sell 400 units of its flagship widget product, more widgets, at a price of $300 each and variable costs of $110 per unit. With the ad campaign, the company believes it can sell 420 units at the same price and variable costs. Fixed costs are regularly $40,000 per year. What do you think? Should the company proceed with the advertising campaign? Let's take a peek. All right, so here I've set up just your simple contribution margin uh, financial statement. So a set of um, statements where we have our revenue, less our variable costs, equal our contribution margin, less our fixed costs, equal our operating income. So let's see what our revenue would be under option one, no ads. We would sell 400 units at $300 each for a total revenue of 120,000. Now, if we decide to go ahead with the ads, it would be 420 units sold times by the same $300. Okay, so the difference between ads and no ads, let's see is $6,000. All right. Are we done? Is that it? No, because we have more costs associated with that advertising. Advertising ain't free. All right. So let's see our variable costs. Our variable costs are going to be a negative because they're a cost. So we had 400 units that were sold and the variable cost is 110 right here, 110 per unit. And it's the same either way. So whether or not we sell 420, or we sell, let me negative, um, 420 times by 110. All right, so, uh-oh, that's worse off. Well, yeah, that kind of makes sense. It's worse off because we sold more and variable costs increase or decrease with the volume of items that we sell. Okay, so far I'm feeling okay, but we don't have enough information yet to know if we should proceed or not. Okay. Now let's look at our fixed costs. We have $40,000 in fixed costs, regardless if we do anything. Is that the end of our analysis? Well, no, because under this option, we actually have an extra, let me see, $3,000 in fixed costs. Now you might say, well, no, 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 it's a variable cost because if we don't do it, it's this, and if we do do it, it's in here. So it changes. Just because it changes 
doesn't mean it's variable, right? So what that means is the ad campaign will cost $3,000. Will um, that price, that $3,000, go up or down depending on the amount of units that we sell? No, it's $3,000. You either pay it or you don't. So under here, our fixed costs for the advertising would be $3,000. So we have to add it in here, but we don't have to add it into fixed costs here because that's the whole option. Number one is no ads. Okay, so now we have negative 3,000. Hmm. So what should we do? Well, we should look at the total operating income and see whether or not which one is the best, uh, the best option for us. I see I've added this, so let me just, or I'm minus that, so let me just go back up here. Okay, so I look here, and oh, same thing here. I have to make sure, because I made them negative, I minus them. Look at me go. Okay, so I have $36,000 would be my operating income if I didn't have any ads. And if I had ads, I'd make $36,000 $800. So my difference is going to be um, this $800. So I make more money if I have the ads or not. So here's where we get to make our recommendation. If this is a multiple choice question, if this is numeric, um, the default is for for-profit companies, which is what we'll be looking at unless I said this was some other type of company, um, would be to maximize uh, net profit, no, uh, maximize operating income. So here, the correct answer would be to, uh, to proceed with the ad campaign. However, you know, using this foundation, if this was, say, a case, the quants are only a part of it. So we won't be getting into case analysis in this course, but you are building the foundation in order to apply it. So I want you to ask yourself, would there be a scenario if you would actually if the numbers were exactly the same, if you would ever advise your client uh, to not go forward with the advertising? I would say absolutely. Um, you know, somebody's gonna have to go manage the advertising um, people. Some There's gonna be, you know, this isn't without its time costs, your resource costs, your employees. Um, is this really a big enough, you know, boost for, you know, the risk of spending $3,000, the time and the extra costs. Um, what if, you know, I think we've all seen sometimes advertising campaigns that don't go according to plan. So, you know, how certain is this 100 or extra 20 sales? And is that extra 20 sales really worth it? Um, is there, you know, what is it? Maybe you want to do a probability uh, for this. Um, maybe do a whole full-blown sensitivity analysis. At the end of the day, you know, is having... 800 divided by 3,000, you know, is that worth it to you? Uh, the answer may be yes. The answer may be no. Uh, and that is absolutely okay. For now, we're looking at using this as a foundation, as a building block. So we want to maximize our, our uh, operating income. So in this case, we would advise the company to proceed with the advertising campaign. Alrighty, let's move on. Operating leverage refers to the sensitivity of the operating income to changes in sales values. It is broadly a reference to what percentage of the cost structure of a company is fixed and which is variable. A company with a higher proportion of fixed costs has a high degree of operating leverage. This means a company with a high degree of operating leverage has profits that are more sensitive to changes in sales as each incremental sale above fixed costs will go directly to impacting the bottom line. That is, one more sale above break even has the contribution margin equal to profit. The degree of operating leverage can be calculated as the contribution margin divided by operating income. How may we use this? So when performing CVP, cost volume profit analysis, 
it may be useful to calculate the degree of operating leverage. The degree of operating leverage can then be referenced to determine the potential effects of a downturn in sales, for example, when planning for a recession, or you can also look at and incorporating it for a sensitivity analysis, say if you are, for example, trying to figure out whether or not to go forward with this advertising campaign or not. Hmm. Now it's your turn. You are a small business owner uh, manufacturing artisan soap. You wonder if adding a new product will help improve the profitability of your business. You believe if you create a new type of soap, you will incur fixed costs of $1,000 annually, variable costs of $3 a unit, and will be able to sell each bar of soap, each unit, for $6. Each year, you believe 700 people will buy this new type of soap. By how much will operating income increase or decrease if you proceed? Is it A, an increase of $1,100? B, a decrease of $1,100. C, an increase of $3,200. Or D, an increase of $2,100. All right, so let's look at what our operating income would be. In order to do that, let's figure out what our revenue would be. That would be 700 units of sales times by our $6 per unit, 4,200. We then would incur 700 units times by $3 in variable costs. So we'd have our revenue less our, our variable costs. And that would give us our contribution margin of 2,100. We then need to less our fixed costs. And we'll just shrink this a little bit. Stay in the screen of our $1,000. And then we would get our operating income or operating loss. Let's see if that will be positive or negative. Contribution margin less our fixed costs equals an operating income increase of $1,100, and that gets us to A. So if you said A, you are absolutely correct, operating income. Okay, so congratulations. You have now completed the first chapter of cost management. What should you do now? Well, you should pat yourself on the back, so thank you so much for your hard work, and then I will continue on to the tutorials. So how about you attempt those questions in the tutorials by yourself, and then watch the video to see, you know, if you got it all correct, um, maybe you can pick up some efficiencies or, you know, just make those small incremental improvements to really solidify your knowledge. Want even more practice? I suggest going on to the dynamic study module. In, um, in your MyLab, your Pearson MyLab, you'll notice that I have tailored a study plan for you. Uh, in each block, you'll have six mini questions. So you can actually even download the app and do this, like say if you're waiting at the store uh, or somebody else is driving, <laughs> maybe you're going on a trip somewhere, uh, somebody else is driving and you want to practice a little bit of counting. Again, um, learning is uh, repeated exposure to same or similar material. So the last thing I want to know um, is if you're sitting down on a Saturday and you're gonna study for 10 or 12 hours on one topic, particularly my topic, that would bum me out. Little bits, little bits, little bits. That's what adds up, and that's what helps keep it a little bit exciting as well. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next chapter. I'm looking forward to it.